Most men think you have only two choices to either suffer from low testosterone or go on lifelong TRT, which could shut down your fertility unless you use HCG. But what if you can boost your testosterone naturally and stay fertile and potentially not need exogenous testosterone? Today, I'm with Dr. George Tuliatos, and we're here in Athens and we're sharing the exact secret protocol from Dr. George, including strategies and timelines and the latest studies. So if you've been looking for an alternative to lifelong TRT, you'll want to see this all the way through until the end. All right, so good to have you back, Dr. George. Glad to see you Dr. again T, in yeah. Athens, uh, Michael, and uh, welcome to my home. Yeah, thank you. Thank my you for house. hosting us over here. It's the first a lovely time home. shooting. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, speaking about this hormonal boost. Okay, but fir so firstly, before we talk about that, I guess I suppose the question is why do men need the testosterone in the first place? Just a really brief overview. Why do you think... Well, in the lack of testosterone, we speak about this several times, several uh, things develop like depression, erectile dysfunction, lack of sex drive, uh, body composition and visceral fat accumulation that leads to insulin resistance and obesity that create the metabolic syndrome, right? All these aged men because lack of testosterone hypogonus is an inflammatory d uh, disease, all right? But unfortunately, the medical board and, and the knowledge urologists hesitate to administrate testosterone for their own reasons, but it seems that it's not about the levels of testosterone because we have a certain level, let's say 250 nanograms. As, 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 as the treatment level, 250 yeah, nanograms. Unfortunately, I've seen levels below 150 that get denied to uh, receive testosterone. And I think they have an agenda for this. They don't want testosterone for sure in order for a man to be miserable and receive antidepressive, statins, semaglutide, and of course, erectile dysfunction uh, medications. Yeah, it's actually interesting you mentioned semaglutide because that's, that's the newest, latest, the GLP-1 agonist. So, and if you're fat, if you're obese and with low testosterone, they prefer to give you semaglutide, <sighs> but you're gonna waste your muscle, apparently, yeah. because you don't have any testosterone to preserve the muscle during the diet they just give you the order diet, but the point is you cannot diet if you are on low energy with low testosterone. And 99% you're going to waste your muscle that will create more insulin resistance. And, and so more body fat. And the perfect combination yeah. is testosterone along with semaglutide, low carb diet, cardio, lifting weights, and then you're going to preserve the muscle tissue, kill the fat, improve the body composition, okay? and you're going to be much happier, of course, with higher testosterone. Anyway, now, the commitment with TRT is something that not many people can address. All right, so let's say we have a 30-year-old guy with uh, 200 nanograms, okay? It's, a, it's very demanding to say that hopefully, if you live up to 100, you're going to receive testosterone for 70 years. And if you are planning to become a dad at 40, you need to use alongside HG for 10 years. This is something very demanding and expensive, of course, and not many people are willing to do this on a weekly basis or even on a daily basis with a cream. But there's a growing number of, of, of people that, that do say, no, just give me the testosterone, but you're right. Yeah, but still, they, some they hesitate and they freak out and they panic. Well, my point is, if you go to the end and give you the T4, are you saying I'm going to keep it forever? Of course you will, because it's something that you need and it works and uh, it feeds your deficiency. So taking your cream simply is like brushing your teeth every day. Do you yeah. ever stop eating? No. And if something works, why to stop it? But many people are not that committed and freak out that yeah. I have to do this every day for the rest of my life. So we have an alternative thing to increase your own endogenous levels. Even though below 300, it's not very promising, yet I've saved many cases of people that even prefer a temporary solution rather than go to the permanent TRT. The point is, you're gonna feel much better within a month with the TRT. But many people yet prefer to boost the endogenous production with two kind of protocols I have created and okay. the 90% they work. They don't work when you don't sleep well, when you don't consume cholesterol, and if you booze. If so the mean frame alcohol. factors is sleep from 11 to 7, yeah. the psychiatric rhythm, okay, when testosterone is elevated, then avoid alcohol that aromatizes in the liver and lowers testosterone, and also eat cholesterol from steak and eggs in order to synthesize the testosterone. Also, you shouldn't overtrain because after half an hour, 45 minutes, then cortisol uh, is released to suppress the inflammation in the muscular joints, and then testosterone is inhibited. But anyway. Well, quick question about cortisol. But, but before we do, something that raises my cortisol is when people don't subscribe to the channel. So look, <laughs> if you've been looking at the channel and you've enjoyed the content, please, why don't you subscribe to Balance My Hormones to our channel so you can get the latest and hit the notification bell so you don't miss when the videos drop. 
So anyway, George. So as a matter of fact, cortisol elevates when you also stay up all night because cortisol is at the lowest levels. You know, at night it should elevate and spike AM. And you want it to spike because that helps you wake up. It yes, but spikes. you shouldn't have raised cortisol at night. No. This is what keeps you Awake. alert. Yeah. And then cortisol, of course, creates insulin resistance and so on. So the protocol is, first of all, we have the clomiphene but preferably the N-clomiphene that increases LH testosterone. Now, the regular clomiphene has a disadvantage and one benefit. It raises LH in testosterone, but as the late Don Cri John Chrysler mentioned, yeah. it raises also SHBG, which is inhibitory to the free testosterone, the one that works. So in the paper, you may have an elevated total testosterone, but the patient does not feel that well because SHBG traps the free testosterone. Right. Okay, so as a balance, we use also mesterolone low dose, in order to have this balance between SHBG and free testosterone. So, preferably I use low dose of N-clomiphene, as Chris was said, 25 milligrams. Uh, clomiphene or N-clomiphene? Well, N-clomiphene, yeah. sorry, along with mesterolone, 25 milligrams. There also, I throw some DHEA at 25 milligrams okay. that has benefits for the stereogenesis. Then the most vital mineral, which is zinc, at 25 milligrams as well. Then also I give the, the steroid vitamin D3 at 10,000 I use, and yeah. finally, I add the boron, the, the mineral that does the same job as mesterolone at 6 milligrams, which is a higher dose. Okay. So and this protocol for 20 days, for 3 weeks, why? Because the provirum comes in 20 pills, and I don't want to do any kind of addiction to the medication. So within 20 days, we can double or even triple initial testosterone levels. 90% of the cases, it works. The 10% that doesn't work is when the patient doesn't focus on the sleep, doesn't eat well, overtrains, or drinks, all right? Now, the other option is to add some HG. HG kicks the balls, all right? At which point, in the beginning of the protocol? In the beginning of the protocol, okay, HG, small doses, a thousand I use every three days for it, for one okay. or two weeks, okay. all right? And after that, you throw the enclomiphene with the rest of the supplements. So we have first the stimulation of the, of the balls, right. and then the stimulation of the hypothalamus, all right, in that particular order, okay? And the final result is very promising. I mean, people have reached over a thousand nanograms, all right, but the point is, it's not going to last. So if you have stress, if you have insomnia, if you have a fight, if you work too much, if you are um, not living well, then it will rebound, okay? And after a couple of weeks or even months, the patient comes to say, well, I, I feel uh, tired again. And then the final option, the inevitable TRT. So they come back to you when they've stopped the protocol. So you do this? Yeah, thing? right after. The day after, take the new labs. And then right? it, it, it does it hold? I mean, do you have a... Well, it lasts, but it depends on the patient, yeah, how yeah, he yeah. lives, okay? If they're not living healthily, you then they give you right back to where they start, yeah. started. Without the, and, and so is that, uh, I guess, promising to continue to do cycles of, of this boosting? I, I mean, no, I mean, uh, well, initially we have the plan A, the plan B, and if it doesn't work, you move to, to tier T. What, do you have any uh, like case studies? Or can you tell us about a patient that you this has worked for? I'm obviously not really revealing their name, but do you have any sort of story about a particular patient? Several. I mean, everything that I upload on the social media yeah. is about the endogenous testosterone yeah. reduction, okay? And people ask me, do you introduce testosterone? No, this is the endogenous one, which is the real deal. Actually, it's much better to increase your own production rather than depend on exogenous levels. Yeah. Well, because some people, um, they, they are freaking out with medications and uh, lifetime treatments, all right? But we're not sure that it's going to last and if it works, you know, forever, uh, permanently. That, that's true, the long-term effects of, because you're still taking an ex exogenous substance, which isn't even natural to your own body, which would be yeah, clomiphene or n to get well, your you body just, to... You give a boost, you know, boost, you don't yeah. rely on this for life. Yeah, so it, it might be just, or for when you need fertility. As well, well, actually, as a matter of fact, both HG and anaclomophene increase fertility, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it increases intratesticular testosterone that will mature the sperm, all right, through the Leydig cells. So, yes, they can increase fertility, but if you want uh, the real deal uh, boost of the Sertoli cells, yeah, you need to add some HG. So the fertility protocol is a thousand IUs of HG every three days, along with 150 of HMG every three days for one month. And then I give low dose of N-clomiphene along with tamoxifen low dose. I will also do oh, a similar draw as Samus. For the LH, yeah. Yes. It, tamoxifen is sensitized to yes. the LH, but that's, yes. that one is, that's some more side effects on the tamoxifen. Well, tamoxifen and N-clomiphene do the same thing, but at a low dose, they work synergistically. Synergistically. But okay. you can do the same with N-clomiphene. 
And so I guess there's one mistake that most guides then do make when they're on clomiphene or enclomiphene. What, what would that be? Well, enclomiphene has a side effect of blurred vision because it causes retinopathy, moodiness because it lowers the estrogen, and also it raises this HBG that makes you lack of sex drive, actually, because this HBG traps the free testosterone. You know, I think we'll, we'll talk about this in a moment, but w what do you think about the th when you inhibit the estradiol in the brain. Essentially, that's what you're doing with clomiphene or n-clomiphene. It, it tricks hypothalamus by lowering the estrogen in hypothesis, and then this is a kick for GnRH that will kick LH and testosterone afterwards. And that, that's what it's known to do, but what is it doing to other neurotransmitters, do you think? Do you think it's affecting your dopamine or serotonin? Perhaps, because they feel moody and crappy on clomiphene, and they feel depressed after a couple of times and I remember bodybuilders used to use up to 100 milligrams of clomiphene which is a crazy dose and taper down to 50 or 25 but this is crazy stuff I mean Crystal said go low for a brief period of time you just need a kick you shouldn't use this for a prolonged period of time because you have the side effects so the PCD protocol works as a stimulation not as a permanent thing okay then obviously with time you're gonna have the recuperation and recovery. So what have you seen different between the clomiphene and the n-clomiphene? N-clomiphene is much more expensive and lacks of the side effects. You don't get as many side effects from no, the n-clomiphene. No, you don't have the blur vision, the moodiness, and the elevation of the SHBG. Okay, you've seen that. That's, yes. That's really good then. Yeah. So less side effects, and do people tend to stay on the n-clomiphene longer than the clomiphene? Yes, one month. Two weeks the HG, one month, so it's six weeks totally. Okay, and then they stop, and then... And yes, then... that's when you're on your own. Okay. You can keep, for instance, a zinc, a boron, D3 vitamin, you know, but uh, the medication needs to stop eventually. Would you recommend if a patient wants to stay, stay on it for six months, the n-clomiphene? No, no, I don't. I don't. You should stop. Come on. You should rely on something. Besides clomiphene, we know it's thrombotic, pre-thrombotic. And even, even the n-clomiphene? No, the n-clomiphene, the clomiphene. The normal clomiphene, yeah. I, I'm not sure about the n-clomiphene, but... To me, the PCT is just a kick. Just you a shouldn't kick. rely on this. Yes. So, so you, you're, you're on your own. You're on your own. Yes. So you should be on your own, actually. Okay. So you're recommending the clomiphene and clomiphene mostly for, I guess, post cycle recovery. Not just that, but people who never touch steroids are around 450, and they don't want to use the stuff, or 350, or even 250 have worked, but it's not that promising as the initial starting level. Okay. So now getting to the one mistake people make, my thought is. And tell me if, if I'm wrong. This is what people have been waiting for. If someone has elevated LH to start with. That well, looks like primary hypogonadism. Yeah. But many people are taking the aspartic acid, Tribulus terrestris, Long Jack, or fenugreek. Is that doing anything? Because if these are no, guys... No, listen. Yeah, yeah. It works in the paper. It elevates LH. But in the paper, it gives you perhaps a better sex drive. But if you have primary hypogonadism... I mean, no, it looks like it looks in the like paper as a yeah, primary yeah. because it kicks and you have an LH of 8, for instance. Right that it's because of the supplements. Right. Which that is, supplements kick the LH, okay? They skew it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there are some patients who aren't on supplements. They have, they come to you and have an elevated LH. Yes, indeed, they have around eight for Do you think this protocol would work for them? Well, it, it will be even higher with the serum, right? You'll because go even after, higher, yeah. after the clomiphene, you have a LH of 12 for But how much more do you think, I mean, how much more uh, juice out of the orange can you squeeze? on a guy that has an elevated... The point LH yeah. will kick the testosterone. Yeah. That's a, a the bit more, a bit more, but there'll, there'll be diminishing returns, won't there? Like if they're already at the top of the line... It's not a promise in there. There's no promise that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be effective long term. Yeah, actually, the clomiphene is good for the secondary hypogonadism that has Low. switched off the LH. Yeah. All right? But that's not that common, is it? The secondary? Yeah. You know, the secondary happens to people that have abused steroids. Right. All right. And it's called late onset hypogonadism. Late onset mm. hypogonadism. Mm. Yeah. And recently I've seen a 60 year old guy who had the LH of 0.7 and a total testosterone 015. A woman has 50. Oh my God. That's, he had 015. Yeah. And he told me he feels very weak. Yeah, he couldn't wash his hair, what Moe Vitalis said. <laughs> he could barely stand and walk. Of course, nothing to do with sex. Of course, yeah. He was overweight. He was uh, around 95 kilograms. 170 uh, tall, okay, and of course he needs TRT because it's the lowest levels I've ever seen. Totally. Crazy, yeah. yeah. And how's he doing now? He said he's over 60. He started using the enanthate, all right. He waits a little bit to kick, all right, and uh, it's never late. I mean, he's 60, he should use it, all yeah. right. So it's and, not too uh, late, you say, yeah. Well, I mean, feel with, uh, I mean, live with uh, dignity for the rest of your life of his uh, years, because really pathetic. So you've seen him, he's, he's, he's happier, this, this, this patient. That, that's well, he's willing to use the testosterone, but of course it's too soon now until the, the enanthate will kick, but he has no other solution. I mean, 
What is a reward to him? In doing this protocol, would you say the biggest mistake, and we talked about that earlier, is someone not actually getting, would you recommend them getting sperm counts and sperm analysis whilst they're on this protocol? Yes, I mean, if they have not created the family yet, I'm telling them to do a seminal diagram, check it afterwards also, and compare because it will apparently will improve, <clears throat> okay? HG and uh, clomiphene will improve the sperm. So yes, I'll tell them to check it out. And of course, before jumping to TRT, you should have also seminal diagram. If you want to preserve your fertility, if it's decent, you need to use HG. So you're saying it's, it's good to have a baseline to know where your sperm count is, or at least have, have Then you folded. shouldn't blame testosterone if yeah. you're already at oligospermia in the first place. Yeah. But if you already follow the children, I mean, you could assume that you, you don't have an issue. And then if you start a TRT after, you don't necessarily have to have a semen analysis, though so, that we can provide those at balance for hormones if people need them through one of our partners. So, all right, so that's, that's a good plan. So I guess there's, there's, um, there's pitfalls to avoid that this protocol isn't really for life like TRT. It's a temporal solution for someone who wants to avoid the permanent TRT and freaks out with this uh, lifetime uh, treatment. So I guess you can, at least in the short term, postpone a little bit, postpone yeah. having to go on a lifelong of TRT. So for final reassurance, you can boost your testosterone, you can preserve your fertility, but you have to do it correctly, you have to do it properly. And maybe the best option is not to expect to be on testosterone or to be on this protocol for life, but to use it to see where you are starting from and maybe preserve that fertility. So in the next video, do make sure you subscribe because we're going to talk about all sorts of things, TRT related health and wellness optimization. Look, if you want to see if this protocol might be right for you, check out the links below in the description and contact Balance My Hormones. And we can also put you in touch with Dr. T. And don't forget to your health, to your hormones and to your future family, it all starts with the right protocol. So if you want to preserve your fertility, if you want to improve your quality of your testosterone levels, remember there is no magic bullet. And then whilst this protocol can improve your testosterone levels and potentially improve your libido and your mood, it might only be short lived, especially if you're coming off an exogenous testosterone or steroids. If you're trying to maintain fertility or increase fertility, these protocols can work and Dr. T has shown that they can. And for more content like this, if you really want to learn more about health Health, wellness and all things TRT it re really do subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and hopefully we'll see you next time to your health to your wellness and to your hormone balance